Welcome back, everyone. Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy. Listen, I appreciate everyone that is watching or listening to my podcast. And I will continue to bring you this free information. I do not believe in charging my listeners for this information. And I'm able to do this because of my vendors and people like Extreme Heaters who are sponsoring my podcast and this video. I will have a link down below for this product. This is a product that is for people that may be deciding to go ahead and camp and use their RVs in freezing weather. This will ensure, when used properly, that you don't have an issue with freezing pipes and, and things of that nature. Uh, it came highly recommended to me from a customer of mine who camped up in upstate New York in the middle of October of last year. And this company has been around for over 10 years in the boating industry. And just in the last three years, it is exploding in the RV industry. So take a look at them. If this is something that you're considering to do as far as camping in colder weather and see if this product may be a fit for you. But let's get on to this. So again, Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy here with Everything RVs Podcast. And this week, I'm excited to bring you, we're going to go ahead and go back to some basics here. See, my job for this podcast is to bring you, those of you that are looking to go camping, and those who are currently camping, the information that you need so that you can make memories that last a lifetime. And so what we're going to be starting with this evening is we're going to be talking about the different types of RVs that are out there. Because I think sometimes uh, maybe things don't get explained to you right. And by the way, this is only part one of a three-part series that is basically gearing it towards you for those that are maybe looking to get into the RV uh, lifestyle, or maybe you might want to be considering upgrading what you currently have. So uh, do bear with me. And by the way, I do appreciate everyone liking and commenting down below to let me know maybe if did I miss something or uh, if you have questions about what I am uh, going over, be more than happy to try and answer those for you. So let's start off with probably the used to be the least expensive thing out there. And that was the pop-ups. Pop-ups are typically a soft sided camper. However, they have evolved and they do have hard sided pop-ups as well. Now pop-ups come in all different sizes with all different type of amenities. Some pop-ups are even toy haulers, which we'll be getting into as well. Um, so they come in all different uh, ways. You know, typically what you're typically seeing is a pop-up, that you typically got to crank up, the top goes up, the bed slide out, maybe it might have a slide out in it, and it's soft sides. That's typically what most people think about when you think about a pop-up. However, there are other pop-ups out there in the market. One is called like Hilo, which is, it is a hard-sided pop-up. And that one, it, typically that one had a motor you push the button and it would uh, go up and uh, it was all hard sided. Now, another hard sided pop up and most people might not even consider it being uh, a pop up. And that is what we would call like an A frame, like an A liner type pop up. They set up very, very quickly. They're hard sided. However, they do have an option for um for hard sides as far as for dormers as well as soft sides and what that does that gives you a little bit extra headroom if and when you're sitting at the dinette or if you have a sofa style bed so when you're sitting in the back area that you have additional headroom um there's another pop up out there and it's a soft one that kind of combines toy hauler with pop up 
and that's um i forget the name of it but it it's just here, here's a picture of it right here it's uh but they are uh, they have been pretty well received and i mean it's more than just a pop up and i say it's a toy haul it could be whatever because of the way uh that they set up but pop-ups are typically the first thing. And the reason why people typically gravitate to pop-ups is because of the fact that they're tent campers and they want to go ahead and just get up off the ground. But they still want to have that tent feel. Hence the reason why they go with the soft-sided um, style pop-ups. Now, once people maybe get into pop-ups, they may want to go ahead and graduate because maybe they want to get away from the wet bath. Maybe they only had a toilet in theirs. Maybe they didn't have any toilet. Maybe all they had was an AC and maybe a refrigerator and a furnace and maybe a, a cooktop that went inside and outside, but it was very basic. So maybe they want to go ahead and graduate and get into something a little bit larger and have the amenities of a travel trailer. However, they still want to have the feel, that tent feel. And that would be going into what we call a hybrid, or some people call them expandables. But the reason why they call them hybrids is because it is a cross between a pop-up and a travel trailer. So you're going to get all the amenities that you get in a pop-up, but then the beds are still going to be feel like you're in a pop-up. So you're up off the ground. Um you have the soft sides all around you. Nice thing with that is, you know, you have the, you can unzip the privacy part of it and just have screens. Some of them have the plastic inside of there. So in the event that it's raining, you can still have those open for the light and so forth. Some of them even come with heated mattresses, which is awesome. I'll tell you, <clears throat> first time I stayed in a, in a hybrid, I'll never forget you know, you, you get your flannel sheets and everything and you're nice and toasty laying in there in bed and then you go ahead and roll over. And boy, I'll tell you, if you don't have that heated mattress, well, I'll tell you what, that's an experience uh, in itself. And, you know, it wasn't a bad experience. I think it was a fun experience. And, uh, you know, that's what camping's all about. So hybrids would be the typically the upgrade from the pop-up. Some people might just go right into a hybrid. Uh, now, when we get done with that, then we'll, what you're going to be looking at is travel trailers. Now, travel trailers, they come in, all again, all different shapes and sizes. Some of these things are teardrops. Some of them are eggs. Now, what I'm talking about is, um, you know, you have your standard uh, travel trailer, which everybody knows what it looks like, right? Then what you have is you have these teardrop campers. They're in teardrop is still considered a travel trailer. It's just a teardrop. Um, and then the other travel trailers, which we call like like eggs, those are like, I'm sure people have seen them out there, like the scamps. Maybe they've seen the Olivers. They're basically um, two-piece molded fiberglass pieces that get put together. And the reason why people really like those is because I feel like when you're inside of them, it kind of feels like you're in a boat because of all the fiberglass. But they're well-made and less chance of leaks. You don't have the seams that you have in a standard type uh, travel trailer. You know, in travel trailers, heck, they could be as small as about maybe 10 feet and getting up to almost 40, 40 feet in travel trailers. So that's the next thing. Now, when you're going to go from the travel trailers, then you're going into the fifth wheels. <clears throat> fifth wheels, again, with every lineup of uh, campers, they're all different shapes and sizes. And fifth wheels, <clears throat> they have, over the last several years, come out with these smaller fifth wheels that you can tow. They're, quote, half ton towable. Be careful when somebody tells you that. Uh, be sure to look at your payload. We'll be saving that for another one of these uh, parts. This is probably part three that we're talking about this. But um, there tend to be smaller fifth wheels. Then you have what we call the mid-pro or mid-profile, as we would call it. They're not going to be, that when you're looking at them, the front cap isn't as big as the full profile. 
most of full profiles, and that's the third one. So you have the half ton towables typically, mid pro, and then the full profile. Full profile, those are the ones that front is pretty much up and down. I mean, it's wide. Um, also, a lot of these, uh, when you're typically in the half ton towables and you're in the mid pro, those are typically your standard eight feet wide. Now, you can find some that are a little bit more narrow, they're out there. Uh, but you're not going to find many in the mid profile that are what we call wide bodies. Now, there are some out there, but not many. Those are typically saved for the full profile, and not all full profiles are what we would call wide body. Now, what does wide body mean? That means it's eight and a half feet wide. So you're basically gaining an additional five inches of interior space once you put the slides out. Um, it's also with it being wider, you typically have the, the axles are a little bit wider. So it's a better stance on the road. Uh, some of these full profile as well. What they have is they have um, what they call a drop frame. So when you're looking through the pass through, there's not a step up going through there. So it's much taller in there um, and heck, heck of a lot more space and cargo carrying capacity with those also. Now with these, they could come with, um, typically with, with, uh, with fifth wheels, you're typically getting two axles and three axles. Um, I know that there has been in the past, I believe I've seen a four axle one at some point, I can't remember, but typically three axles is the, is the maximum for that. But um, next, what you're going to be talking about or being able to see is toy haulers. Now toy haulers, they come in both travel, stri travel trailer si side one size ones or design fifth wheel as well as hybrid style um, toy haulers so they run the gamut now what is a toy hauler toy hauler is something that you may want to consider getting if let's say you wanted to bring um, a bunch of like bicycles motorbikes motorcycles um, maybe you have a golf cart Maybe you have a scooter that you're on. Um, or a lot of people I have seen over the years, they'll buy a toy hauler. They don't have any toys realistically that they're bringing, but what they're doing is they're using it because it is another way of having a bunkhouse style um, camper, whether it's the uh, travel trailer or fifth wheel. The other thing that people love about the toy haulers is the what they call party deck option. Not only is that deck that you have the door that comes down the back, the ramp for you to get toys inside, but it also, most of them have an option for what they call a party deck. And they'll have a railing system that goes around it. Some of them might have an awning that come out. I know back a few years ago, uh, there was a company, I forget the name of the company, that came up with this blow-up, which I thought was in, was genius. It was a blow-up type um, add-a-room that went on the toy hauler deck. And I'll tell you what, I thought that was an awesome thing. I want to say that was in 2021. It was um, first shown at the Tampa RV show. And I tell you, that was a heck of an invention. Although for whatever reason, I guess... It wasn't as good as an invention as, uh, invention as they thought it was. So that has gone by the wayside. So toy haulers are out there. Next, in staying with Tyna Towable, is what we have is what we call destination trailers or campers. And those are ones that you're going to typically have it towed one time. You're going to put it on a piece of property, and it's going to be something for a destination. Those campers can be anywhere. Uh, there are some that have no slides, but the majority of the people that are buying these destination trailers, they want to have a lot of room and they're buying the campers that are 40 uh, to 45 feet in length. They want to have a lot of room inside. They want it to be more like a condo that they go to the beach in or a condo they're going up in the mountains or wherever they're going, whatever the destination that they set it at. Uh, and these days, a lot of people are living out of those things because they're really not much different than those um, than a mobile home. When when you think about it, 
you know, you can bring it in, uh, take the axles off, skirt it, do all that good stuff. And it, it looks just like a, almost like a mobile home pretty much, but you get slides, but uh, people do do that. Now, last thing that you might be putting on a truck would be a truck camper. And again, truck campers, they come in all different uh, sizes. They have some that are small enough for you that if you had a Toyota Tacoma, you could put it on a Toyota Tacoma all the way up to where, you know, you might need a 550 for some of these that have these massive slides. Uh, but truck campers, what people love about truck campers for the most part is the fact that they are able to tow something else behind them, whether it be another vehicle, whether it be a boat, because some of these people, you know, they're going out um, somewhere um, on the water and they want to be able to bring their boat with them. Maybe they're going out hunting and maybe they're towing the, a, a cargo trailer behind them because they have a, um, a golf cart in there or some type of some type of alter, maybe four wheelers, something where they're going out and uh, hunting or going out just four wheeling, number of different things. But it gives them a home base when they're out there. So much flexibility with a truck camper. And I doubt that many people would actually be towing a car behind them. Um, I think more realistically, they might be towing a cargo, uh, enclosed or a cargo trailer with like a motorcycle or four wheelers, a boat, things of that nature. Um, behind them. But uh, the nice thing is with that, you can just drop it. Now you've got a home base and you're able to go ahead and just take your truck and you can go places if you need to. Because I tell you, for the most part, these truck campers, if you get these really big ones, it's not like anybody can pull under it and take it. Um, you know, if you if you set it up right, because they got to have a way of, of lifting the legs and they've got to have a pretty significant... Um, truck in order to take one of those. I know it becoming more and more prevalent with these uh, travel trailers and so forth being stolen. Hence the reason why you want to have the proper <clears throat> protection for those things. So, but that's pretty much all of the towable side. Now we're going to get into the drivable side and there's three different classes of drivables, class A, class B, and class C. Okay. There is not, if you look at stat surveys, there is not one out there for a B plus. I know there are people out there to tell you all the time, look at this B plus and it's not a B plus. It's a class C. And I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. But class A's, let's talk about class A's. Class A's, you've got really three different types of class A's. You've got a gas class A. So it's a gasoline engine. Those are most of the time, I think all the time, they're up front. Um, next, and typically you could tell, I would say that 90, 95, 99% of the time, if you see an entrance door on towards the middle of a, of a motorhome, class A motorhome, 95% of the time or more, it's going to be a gas motorhome. Now there are some diesel pushers and, uh, some Freds out there that they're in the middle as well. But for the most part, it's going to be a gas engine. But you can tell by when you're looking at the motorhome, really what kind of motorhome it is. The other one, a Fred. That what, what is a Fred? Fred is a front engine diesel. Uh, and uh, those have come, they've, you know, come and gone uh, over, over time. And that's mainly to give people a little more horsepower, a little bit more torque uh, with that. They've improved on the uh, noise aspects of it when it's the fret, when they call the Fred. And then you have a diesel pusher. Diesel pushers, those are the ones that you have, the engine is in the back. Um, with diesel pushers, they tend to be typically longer. Those are gonna go up to 45 feet. Your gas motor homes and your Freds, typically your max would be, uh, would be about 40 feet. But typically lengthwise, if you have, see a gas motor home, they could be anywhere from about 25 feet up to about 40, 40 feet. And really, I'm thinking more 27 feet um, as far as a gas motor home, although there might be some others that might be a little bit smaller. There is a motor home out there that looks like a Class A, but it, re it is really on a Class C chassis. And the way you can tell is when you're looking at the front, if the front is narrower and it's going back wider, 
till it gets to about um, past the seats and then it straightens out. That's how you know that that one was on a class C chassis. So uh, they're out there as well. Now there's a motorhome that is out there. I don't see them anymore being sold new, but they had a mid mid engine diesel motorhome, which came out. That was out. I want to say like, eh, let's see. I want to say it was like 2015, 2016, maybe 2017. And they might've been out before then as well, but they have kind of gone by the wayside. I'm not sure what, what caused that. Um, it might just been because of its, the hassle to service them and things of that nature. But so those are class A motorhomes. The next thing is we have class B motorhomes. It's very simple to pick out a class B motorhome because it is a van motorhome. It's just a van. So uh, basically it could be a Ford, uh, Ford van, Ford Transit nowadays, but before it could have been the regular Ford or Chevy chassis, um, Mercedes chassis. So, I mean, you see these um, Mercedes FedEx delivery vans. That's a Class B motorhome. Now, these Class B motorhomes can be anywhere from about 16 feet, typically up to about 24 and a half feet. The longer ones, typically about once you're going to get to 22 feet or longer, those are typically on the dualies, uh, whether that's going to be on a 2500 or a 3500 chassis. So those are Class B. Now, I'd mentioned before, no such thing as a class or as a B plus. Uh, don't get hung. You know, I need you to just understand there's going to be people out there telling you something's a B plus. Just understand that when it goes to register or when it is being shipped to the dealers from the manufacturer, it is classified as a class C. When you register it, it's a class C. And what does a class C stand for? It's cutaway. Um, and basically, that's what it looks like right there. That's a cutaway chassis. And then what they're able to do is they're able to build from the inside out versus a Class B motorhome. They're building from the outside in. I mean, because the van's already built. Now they get to build everything on the inside. And hence the reason why Class B motorhomes tend to be more expensive than Class Cs because of the fact that it's more labor intensive. Now, going along with the Class C motorhomes, you also have Super Cs. Now, the Super Cs, those are typically on a Ford 550 chassis, a Dodge 5500 chassis. Sometimes you might see a Chevy 4, uh, 4 550, 650 uh, freight liners. They have Mercedes. You know, so you have, they're a much bigger, beefier style uh, motorhome. Typically, the Super Cs, are for people that want to have more cargo carrying capacity. They want to maybe have a little bit better ride experience. Cause if you're getting, when you get up to the Freightliner chassis and some of these Mercedes chassis, they're going to have those air ride front seats. The, the, they're going to have air ride or they're going to have a better suspension system than they would for your typical uh, class C motorhome or some of those smaller uh, super C's. So, Hopefully, I have covered everything pertaining to all the different uh, types of RVs out there. Hope I didn't confuse anybody, but tell me if I missed something uh, or if maybe you look at things a little bit different. Be more than happy to hear what you have to say. But uh, I do appreciate you uh, watching and I appreciate everybody supporting and checking out my sponsors. And again, my sponsor for today was Extreme Heaters. And uh, they're an American-made company. So uh, check them out. Special code, special discount up to January 31st. Uh, that'll be down below this podcast as well as the video here on YouTube. So thanks again. And I'll be back at you next week. Same time, same bat channel. Take care.